fiery horse with the speed of light, a clod of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Hi! Sheriff Bailey sat in his dingy office talking to one of his deputies. It was noon on a hot day, and the little town of Crack Rock was quiet. Man alive, Joe, it sure is hot today. Yeah, we can sort of take it easy, like, seeing as how we haven't much to do. Hey, something's happening outside. Yeah, come on. I guess we better hurry, Sheriff. Say, the mommy's riding away look like outlaws. Yeah. And they're riding away from in front of the bank. Let's get over there. Right. Here's the sheriff coming. Yeah, he's too late to do anything. Now what happened here? Sheriff, oh, you've got to do something. Now, Julius, calm Jeff. down. Calm down. You're the teller in the bank. Now tell us what happened. Well, things were quiet in the bank at being noontime and all. I was counting out a shipment of new bills and some gold coins that come in by express. I wasn't paying much attention to anyone in the bank till I heard a voice at the window. It was an easy, drawling kind of voice. You all got a minute, mister. You and me's got a little business to attend to. Be with you in just a few minutes, stranger. Sorry, just but I just I... can't wait. Me and the boys here are in sort of a hurry. <laughs> well, as soon as I get these bills cut... Got... I've got Why, well, you're plenty Seeing of... Seeing as how this here's a hold-up, I figured I might need it. Push out those nice new bills and gold coins and do it fast. You can shove them right into this open bag I'm holding up to the window with my left hand. Come on. All right. Yeah, I'm sure... We want to get out of here. Somebody should have come and see her. <laughs> you see them three hombres leaning against the wall? Friends of mine. Fine shots. Julius, I'm going to lunch it. Hey, what's going on? It's a hold-up. Watch out, Mr. Ward. Hold up. Help! 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 <laughs> you see what I mean, mister? The boys are awful good shots. So long. And then they run out of the bank and jumped onto their Bronx. I guess you know the rest. They all had bandanas over part of their faces. Hey, what about Mr. Ward? He's dead, Sheriff. They got away with $10,000 in cash. You got to do something right away. Yeah, from what you tell me, I'd say that leader with the drawling voice was Tennessee Moody. What? I got a handbill on him. Holy cow, Tennessee Moody. He and that gang of his are mean. Yeah, somebody go get the coroner to come over. The rest of you get your horses. 
If I'm a posse, go after them killers before the trail gets cold. Yes, well, you can count me out, Sheriff. Yeah, me too. I'm not chasing that, Omri. Them gunslingers are too good, Sheriff. Oh, if you're all that scared, stay here. I'll get another deputy or two and we'll go after them. Come on, Joe. Right. Hey, I'll have a look at them books. Late that afternoon, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, who had ridden far north to Prescott in the Arizona Territory on an army mission, were making the return trip to Texas. They reached the hills on the outskirts of Crag Rock and made camp for the night. Tonto inspected their supplies, then spoke. He must tell me, we need supplies, not have much left. Well, we can get some supplies in the town of Crag Rock. And you want me to go to Crag Rock now? Oh, we'll both go, Tonto. But before I ride into town, I'll remove my mask and fix a disguise. I'm not known at all up in this territory and can't take any chances. Isn't that right? Kimasabi, you remember you say maybe Badland Pete, who escaped from prison months ago, come to this territory? Yes, I was hoping we might pick up his trail while we're on this trip. Maybe him grow beard, look different. Well, I've thought of that. And if him round town, him recognize voice alone, Ranger... That's so. Well, after I fix my disguise, I'll remember to change my voice when I get to town. That'd be good. Help me with my disguise, Tonto. Then we can get to town before darkness sets in. Ah. About an hour later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reined up in front of the general store in town. Oh, sir. Oh, oh, scout, oh, Tonto. Big oh. Oh. Easy, Scout. Come on, Tonto. Ah. Well, howdy, stranger. What can I do for you? Good evening. I have a list telling what I want, mister. We come back to get them a little later. Uh, this here's the list. You sure are laying in a stalk of victuals, it seems like. I reckon it won't be more than we'll need for a trip down to Texas. It's a mighty long ride from here. Yes, that's right, mister. Fixing to go on a trip south with, huh? Well, I haven't seen you with the Indian around here before, or have I? Nope, but don't reckon you have, mister. Seeing as how we're just passing through. Uh, how soon will you have the supplies ready? It won't take too long. Maybe we better just wait around while you get them together. Well, now, maybe you better not, stranger. Take a little while to fill this order. Got something else to get done first. Come back in uh, about a half an hour or so. <laughs> that suits me fine. We'll go over yonder to the cafe to pass the time. Come along, Todd. Yeah, hey, Jake. Come here, quick. Huh? What's the matter? That hombre that just went out. Didn't you notice him? Uh, not too close. Why? Julius, the teller at the bank, said that outlaw, Tennessee Moody, was tall and well built and spoke with a draw, you remember? Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm positive that that hombre that just went out is Tennessee Moody. He talked with a draw. You saw how he looked. Yes, yes, I did. And he said him and that Indian with him were just passing through. And they ordered supplies to last him on a ride south into Texas. They'll be back here in half an hour. We're not going to see if the sheriff and the posse have come back yet. Now hurry. I sure will. Be a chance to catch Tennessee Moody without his bang, gang being with him for protection. I'll run right over there now. Jake hurriedly left the general store, and a few minutes later, he entered the sheriff's office. Well, hi, Jake. What's up? Hey, golly, Sheriff. I'm glad you're here. Well, we just got back. Come in the back door. We lost a trail of those outlaws. That's right. They're plenty smart. You've got a chance to catch Tennessee Moody right now, Sheriff. Well, what do you mean? An hombre answering his description. New talks with a slow drawl. Just come into the store to get supplies. Right day. He left an order, and he's coming back to pick up the stuff. He had an Indian with him. I came to get you, so maybe you can catch him while he's here in town without his gang. But if he is Tennessee Moody and we grab him, we'll never get the rest of that gang, Sheriff. Oh, that's right. Joe, you and Jake ease around town and pass the word. Huh? Get as many men together as you can. Here, what for? Tell them to be ready to ride with me and my deputies as soon as that hombre leaves town. I'll go in the back door to the general store so as I can get a look at him when him and the Indian come to pick up their supplies. We'll follow them with the big posse to their camp and grab the whole gang. Now get moving and have the men ready to ride. Right. Twenty minutes later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto went to the store and got their packages. They carried them out and stood packing them into the saddlebags. As they stowed the supplies away, the Lone Ranger spoke to Tonto in a low voice. You notice how glad everyone was when we went in for the supplies, Tonto? Ah, me notice. 
storekeeper, him not say much. Act plenty strange. Him keeps looking at back room, seem like. Easy, Silver. Yeah, that'll carry all right. We're being watched on all sides right now. I don't understand it, Tonto. But I feel a tension in the air that I don't like. Uh -huh. Not good. There. Me ready now. Good enough. Easy, big fun. Easy, easy. Right, easy. Go. Come on, sir. Get him up, Scout. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode leisurely out of town, the sheriff, who had come from the back room of the store and stood in the window with others watching, turned and spoke. I feel sure that's Tennessee Moody, all right. It's him, Sheriff. You can bet on it. It tallies with the description on that handbill. He has that slow drawl that Julia spoke of, too. I noticed he paid you with a gold piece. Yeah, him and that Indian sure have fine horses. Yeah, must have stole them someplace. Well, I guess the posse's waiting and ready to ride out back. Well, good luck, Sheriff. Hope you grab the gang. You better watch out for an ambush, Sheriff. I don't think he suspects anything. Joe got together a big posse. And before many hours go by, I feel sure we'll round up that outlaw gang once and for all. Hello, the more I think about it, the more I wonder about the suspicious attitude of the men back in Crag Rock. Why you think the Mac that way, you must not be. I can't think of anything we might have done to arouse their suspicion. There were quite a number of horses at the hitch racks in town when we arrived. I noticed when we left that most of them were gone. That right. Could be that they were waiting for us to ride out of town so they could follow us. Why them do that? I, I don't know. But I had the feeling that they might. You think it's safe for us to go back to camp? I don't know. We'll stop behind those boulders just ahead, Toto, and watch the trail for a while. If they are being followed, I'd like to know it. Uh, Come on, Sylvia. Get him up, Scout. Pulling in behind the large boulders, the Lone Ranger and Tonto sat in their saddles for about five minutes, waiting and watching the trail. Well, so far no one has appeared, Tonto. If them coming, seem like them be along by now. Yes. Ready, <laughs> Silver. I think Silver hears something. Ah. Uh. Him looking down trail. Look, Kimasabi. Me see cloud of dust. Look like many riders coming. Yes, you're right, Tonto. I can't make them out yet. And soon come past boulders. That looked like big posse. Yes. I'm sure they're following our trail. That's strange. Now, me see him now. Fellow in front wear sheriff badge. The sheriff and a posse. Oh, 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 oh. What we do, Kimasabi? You have to act fast. Hold your fire, Sheriff. Who come out to talk to you? Oh, 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 oh. All right, Tennessee Moody. Both of you come out here with your hands up. There's 12 of us against the two of you. All right, Tonto. We'll do as he says. All right, Sheriff. We're coming out now. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Oh, Silver. Oh, Scout. Oh, 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 now, don't make a move, either of you. Lucky for you, Tennessee, that you decided to give up so quick. We're out to get you dead or alive. But there must be some mistake, Sheriff. My name ain't Tennessee Moody. What? Fact, I never heard of anyone by that name. Just that, talk. That right. No use trying to bluff out of it. I got a handbill that describes you to a T. You and your gang robbed the Crag Rock Bank and killed the banker this noon. You made the mistake of coming into town with that drawl of yours and buying supplies. I assume that drawl for a purpose, Sheriff. Listen to him. I'm speaking now in my natural voice. Uh, you're smarter than I thought, Tennessee. Been using the drawl to fool people. But you should have dropped it when you come for them supplies this afternoon. We're taking you back and you'll hang for murder, both of you. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Suspecting that they might be followed, the Lone Ranger and Tonto pulled off the trail and waited behind some large boulders. Soon the sheriff and the posse came along, and learning from the tracks that the two were hiding nearby, started toward the boulders in a semicircle, shooting as they went. The Lone Ranger, playing for time, called out, and then he and Tonto came out to face the posse. In spite of the Lone Ranger's denial, the sheriff was certain he was Tennessee Moody and told them the posse was taking them back to town and that they'd hang for murder. Well, I keep him covered. Somebody take his guns. Oh, just a minute, Sheriff. I want to show you something that will prove to you I'm not Tennessee Moody. If you move your hand near one of them guns, I I'll... just want to reach into my shirt pocket. All right. Go ahead. Watch him, Sheriff. First, I'll put this on. Hey, look at that. A black mask. That's more proof that you're an outlaw. But I'm not an outlaw. Now, look at this. Come on, Sully. Hmm. A bullet. A silver bullet. Yeah, that's right, it is silver. But that doesn't prove anything to me. If you want to use expensive bullets like that, it's up to you. You not hear a masked man who ride white stallion carry silver bullets? Nope. Any reason why I should have? All I know is that Tennessee Moody is a bad armory who pulls all sorts of tricks. This is just another trick to try to gain time, I reckon. Maybe he's expecting his gang. Yeah, let's get going with him. He's full of tricks, Sheriff. Come here and take his guns, Joe. As the sheriff spoke, the Lone Ranger noticed that his eyes momentarily glanced toward his deputy, Joe. Acting quickly before anyone could sense what he was doing, the masked man who had moved alongside the sheriff to show him the silver bullet suddenly drew one of his guns and jabbing it into the sheriff's side spoke firmly. Drop your gun. Drop it. What the... If anyone moves, I'll have to shoot. Drop that gun. Yes, I have to. Now order your men to ride back up the trail. Go ahead if you want to live. No, by thunder, I won't. If we don't, Sheriff. Come on, men. We better do like he said. Oh, yeah. Wait, you fools! He'll kill me anyway, even if you do what he said. Let them go, Sheriff. I don't intend to kill you. That right. I'll see here, Tennessee Moody. I told you, you I'm not Tennessee Moody. You're hardly convinced. Well, this is the only way. Men far enough away now, Kimasabi. Good enough. All right, Sheriff. You can ride after them. After we leave, you can come back here and get your gun. I get going. We'll meet again. And next time, you won't pull any of your tricks. I'll see to that. Get up there. Come on. Get up there. All right, Tonto. Let's get going and fast. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Tonto. All right, man. Riding at breakneck speed, the masked man and Indian raced along the trail with the sheriff and his posse in full chase behind them. Fortunately, the distance between the fleeing men and the posse was enough to make the posse's shots ineffective. But the Lone Ranger knew that he had to do something drastic to get the sheriff and posse off their trail. He urged the great stallion Silver to greater speed. Come on, Silver! Fast to make fun of them! Rounding a bend in the trail, the two men were out of sight of the posse momentarily. The Lone Ranger called out to Tonto. Hello! Swing to the right, off the trail. A deep, rocky ravine to right. It's six, seven feet cross. It big jump for horses. We'll have to chance it. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scout. Ravine just ahead, Kimasami. Yes, get ready for it. Up, Silver. Up, scout. We made it. Ah, uh, not able to cross ravine. We'd be able to lose him now. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scout. The Lone Ranger and Tonto continued to race on for two or three miles. Then they reined up. Oh, Silver, easy. Oh, oh, easy, easy. Oh, brother. We've lost them by now, Tonto. Ah, it's narrow escape, Kimasabi. I still think you outlaw named Tennessee Moody. Yes, I know. I'm not here, a Lone Ranger, around here, it seemed like. At any rate, the sheriff didn't react to the silver bullet I showed him. It's nighttime now, but that bright full moon. What we do, go back to camp, maybe? We'll find some other place to camp, Tonto. The posse may have discovered our campsite back along the trail. And that's right. Horsel, hold, 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 Bullet come from left. Must be an arroyo over there. There's no one in sight. Beach, both of you. You all don't hang it to die right quick. Do as he says, Tonto. Uh. Come on, get up. Come on. Get up. Oh, go there. Oh, oh, oh. There, Bill. Mask owl hoot. An Indian. Yeah, and they're heading right toward our camp. You must be Tennessee Moody. I've heard about that drawl of yours. I'm Tennessee Moody, all right enough. What I want to know is who are you? What's the idea of poaching on our territory? My name doesn't matter, Tennessee. As a matter of fact, my friend and I just outrode a posse. A posse, eh? What'd you do? 
Frankly, they mistook me for you. <laughs> Everybody knows me by the way I talk. If they heard that voice of yours, they'd know you warned me right off, mister. Well, that's uh, just it. I went to town to get supplies, and I changed my voice in the store. I reckon being about your size and talking like this is the reason for what they thought. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> he is built like a Tennessee. And talking like that, even if I, even I could mistake him for you if I didn't know you so well. <laughs> I was hoping I might be able to find you, Moody. What would be your reason for wanting to meet up with me, mister? Maybe to join up with your gang. That could be reason enough. Well, how much longer are you going to hold that gun on us? <laughs> well, now, I guess you can put your hands down and be comfortable. I could use a couple of good men. I can see you don't scare easy. That's right. I don't. Of course, for the time being, you'll both be sought on probation till you work a job with us and prove yourself. That's all right with us. That's right. I might as well warn you, the men will be suspicious of you for a while. So don't go pulling anything funny. If one of them decides an hombre can't be trusted, they don't hesitate to put a slug into him. I understand, Tennessee. We'll both be careful. All right, then. Come on, we'll take to our camp. Get up there. Come on, get, get up. up. Come on. After riding hard for half an hour, the outlaws led the Lone Ranger and Tonto into a small valley where there were two shacks which they used for a hideout camp. The outlaw Bill took the horses to a lean-to out back. Then he went to one of the shacks to rest. Tennessee took the Lone Ranger and Tonto into his own shack. You can bunk in here with me, mister. I reckon the Indian will want to roll up in his blanket outside. That's right. Well, thanks, Tennessee. Oh, uh... Where are the rest of your men? Well, there are just two more beside Bill and me. Oh? The other two, Tex and Blackie, went to Farville, west of here, to line up a job for us. They'll be back soon, I reckon. Sit down, mister. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I guess maybe you'd enjoy hearing about how easy we pulled that bank job in Crag Rock today. Yes. Uh, tell me about it. Well, we started at noon, and everything was quiet in town. Then the four of us rode in slow-like and drew rain up before the bank. Weren't many people As around, Tennessee started to tell about the bank robbery, Tonto walked back and stood in the shadows. Unobserved by Tennessee, the Lone Ranger moved his hands, forming words in Indian Sign Language that Tonto understood. Though the masked man didn't take his eyes off Tennessee, he knew that Tonto would be watching. We were on our Bronx and hightailed it out of town before anybody seemed to catch on to what had happened. You had things well planned. Yep, we sure did. Um, me go now. Get blanket. Get sleep. All right, Toto. Good night. Good night. Until we're sure about you, I'm not letting you and that Indian friend of yours get together to do any talking, mister. I gotta play safe. Well, that's all right with me, Tennessee. Well, I think I'll rest in one of the bunks until the two men you want me to meet get here. Sure, go right ahead. Thanks. I'll play a game of solitaire till Tex and Blackie come back. Then I'll wake you up to meet them. It was almost two hours later that the Lone Ranger heard the door open and sat up in time to see Bill enter the shack. Hey, Tennessee. Tex and Blackie just got back. Did you tell them to come in here? Yeah, but they found out something when they went to the lean-to to put up their broncs. What? Well, first, the Indian's horse is gone. <laughs> Are you sure? Well, maybe Tonto just went for a short ride. I don't say of you an Indian riding around at night for pleasure when he's in a saddle most of the day, mister. That isn't all, Tennessee. Tex looked over that white stallion out there. Says he knows of a mask hombre who rides one like it in Texas. A mask hombre who carries silver bullets and is on the side of the law. He's called the Lone Ranger. Don't move, mister. I want to have a look at one of the bullets from your gun belt. Uh, this mask hombre has silver bullets? Then he must be the one that Texas is talking about. He must be that Lone Ranger who's on the side of the law. All right, mister, speak up. Is that who you are? What of it? So you admit it, huh? I reckon you know you won't get out of this shack alive. Oh, I think I will. As Tennessee stood in front of him holding a gun, the Lone Ranger suddenly dropped his arm, grabbing Tennessee's wrist and twisting the outlaw around in front of him. Oh, let go. Drop that gun. Hey, with him holding you that way, I can't shoot him. This will settle you. Oh, my leg. I'll get you for this. I'll shut up, shoot. you. This will shut you up. Go. I heard a shot. Let him have it, Tex. I sure will. No, you won't. Oh, we got this one. 
Open outside. The sheriff and the posse. The court lackey. Are you all right, Kimo Tommy? Yes, Toto. I was afraid you couldn't convince the sheriff. You got here just in time. Well, the Indian come to my office. We were going to hold him till he showed us a letter he brought from your saddlebag. You know, the one the general in Texas gave you as identification to the commanding officer at Fort Prescott. <laughs> Sorry you didn't show me that when we first met, mister. <laughs> I didn't think it would do any good then, Sheriff. Well, you're a Tennessee Moody and his men. I guess you and the posse can handle them. Oh, we sure can. And thanks for capturing them for us. We left our horses back a ways and come along on foot so as he wouldn't hear us. Good enough. How long I'll go now? Adios. Adios, hey, mister. You didn't tell us what that letter said, Sheriff. Yeah. Who is that masked man, anyhow? Well, the letter signed by the general said a masked man... Riding a big white stallion and carrying silver bullets was on a mission for the army and could be trusted absolutely. And it said... Where I come from, down in Texas, everybody knows who that hombre is. Tennessee made the same mistake lots of other Al Hoots make. Lots of sheriffs, too. They think that mask hombre is another outlaw. But they soon find out that he's the toughest hombre on the side of the law. The Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. <laughs>